This is my Dendrobium speciosum Maitsuru back in December of 2018 when I first transitioned her into Leka and a semi-hydro setup. And Amina Samaikina has asked for an update because, well, it's been a while since we've seen this orchid and a few things have happened and I appreciate the request, Amina. So let's do a recap since that video aired, which I will link in the description and what is going on now. It is now April of 2023 and a lot has happened with my little Dendrobium speciosum Maitsuru. I've learned a lot. The only thing I have not learned so far is to get this orchid to bloom. But she's come on leaps and bounds. Back in the day when I got her the first time, I actually bought her because of the variegation that I saw. <laughs> and then she came with all green leaves and I thought, oh well, never mind. I wasn't going to dispute it or fight it or ask for a refund. I just thought, whatever. And then she taught me a lesson because her first little new growth in my care promptly came two months later and it was white and pink and a little speck of green and it was beautiful. So the orchid was not mislabeled, thankfully, because back in the day she was quite pricey. I believe now she's a little bit more common and you can get her more readily, which is a good thing because now I would also like to see blooms of this orchid on the interwebs and I have as yet to find them. Anywho, one little party trick that this orchid has is that every time she's about to start a new growth, she will lose the variegation of a growth. Doesn't have to be the most recent growth, but it can be. And in my case, it is. This little new growth here grew throughout the winter of 22 and 23 look at it i'm gonna try and get that into the shade because gorgeous and promptly the new growth of the summer of 22 right here started to go green this was variegated which is amazing because this is how you can observe this orchid and is she going to throw out another new growth soon all you have to do is watch the leaves and then she'll tell you <laughs> Look at the base of the orchid and see if there is a new growth peeking out somewhere already or keep checking because a new growth is imminent. And as you can see, mine has two directions of growth. So for the summer of 2023, I'm anticipating a new growth to come out in this area, seeing as the one lead has already matured its growth through the winter. And well, this is my second lead now. All the way up to the winter of 2022 and 2023, this orchid has been taken indoors and has been living indoors throughout the cooler months of the year. I've been protecting her, I've been babying her, with the exception of this winter past, 22 and 23. She lived outdoors all the time. I never brought her in. Speciosum do have a reputation to like a nice chill during the winters. So I thought if I'm gonna find any method of getting her to bloom, because I do believe now she's big enough, she has enough growth and my goodness, her roots are just insane, then she should be ready to bloom. Meanwhile, of course, as this growth matured during the winter, I still haven't seen blooms. Now let's see what she does in the summer. And maybe, maybe, I can't be certain, at the end of 23, we might see some blooms on this orchid. I cannot be 100% sure, so I'm just giving you what I've learned up until now with this orchid. Another thing I've learned about this orchid is that she has absolutely not objected to Leka in a semi-hydro setup, being lithophyte as well out in nature. The big giants, they just grow on rocks and <laughs> they become a massive specimen. But these little guys, it's always a little bit different. Will the roots also comply to the same rules, especially being wet all the time? Never an issue with this one when I did the repot of this orchid and I put her into my little square pots. Well, <laughs> I was blessed with the sight of the most gorgeous root system that didn't seem to even have any issues being repotted. And she just chugged along with her next new growth after the repot, which is great news. We don't need that many orchids with root issues. So this one, semi-hydro, if that is your jam, or if you're not sure, let me tell you, that is the jam of this orchid. She just adores it. Now with fertilizing, of course, when she was little, I was very tentative. The whole thing is to get flushing going, get the oxygen exchange into the pot. 
make sure that there's enough gases around the roots as they grow and get accustomed to the new setup. So I was very cautious with fertilizing, but then bit by bit, now that she has increased to this size, she is getting 300 parts per million of fertilizer. Now you may say she's a mini, oh my goodness, that's far too much, but she needs it. She is drinking everything up super fast. Surprisingly, also during the winter, I would have thought the moisture in the air would have helped along with me not having to water or fertilize that much, but nope, au contraire. This little growth, the rest of the structures, uh, they wanted their fertilizer and they got it. So now that she is actually not growing any structures at this point in time, I'm flushing heavily with plain RO water, keeping the salt accumulation at a minimum in the pot because now is the time. It's nice and warm. I can be very liberal about it. But I'm also putting seaweed into the reservoir. I cannot see when the new roots are starting. Normally with these kinds of orchids, the speciosum, the roots pretty much start when the growth has not leafed out yet, still doesn't have a suitable. So it goes in tandem. First the new growth, then it bulks up a little bit, grows a little bit bigger, then the roots start as the growth matures. So while the orchid was being fertilized, the orchid was also growing her roots. For that reason, now all I'm doing is flushing and then putting a seaweed solution into the reservoir, just pumping up the hormones because this lead needs to get a move on as well. Usually around July, end of June, July, I see another new growth starting. Her light levels have increased, of course, because she's been outside all year round now. So she's in the blooming alley during the winter, protected, but the angle of the sun comes in very, very steep and she gets full sun for about two or three hours during the winter. And then it is super bright shade. Now, as we're heading into warm temperatures, she will only ever get super bright shade and that's it. She'll be on the east side on the lower shelf where she has always lived. The reason I believe this orchid needs a lot, a lot of light is because of the fact of the variegation. Every time you get variegated leaves, that's a little bit more challenging to make sure that the light levels are high enough without burning the leaves. Seeing as there is not enough green on some of the leaves, especially this little cutie right here, there is no photosynthesis. There is no chlorophyll. So all the leaves in the back are doing the work. And that is why in light levels are super important to keep them really high. But also we don't want to burn the leaves of these orchids. The only thing I'm seeing here that could have been a little bit of objection to the cold is this leaf. You can see how it's a little bit brown right at the tip here. Um, it's brown. The leaf is going into green, so I'm not concerned. It's not feeling in any way, shape or form compromised, but it has a different look about it. So maybe there's a little bit of a chill damage going on here. I can't be 100% sure because it's surprising to me if anybody should have chill damage, it's this little one here and all the other ones that are even older, but nope, it's just this one that mm, has a weird look about it. Anyway, never mind. You can see that the older seedling bulbs, they will lose their leaves eventually. That is normal. And it's possible that this one is just naturally dying back because it is right at the end of the entire structure. And this is what I'm going to be doing from now on. She'll be on the east side, super bright shade. Seaweed solution goes into the reservoir. And then maybe we'll get some blooms in the winter of 23, 24 because she's not coming indoors anymore. Amina Zamaikina, I hope that this convinces you that it is okay to buy this orchid. If you can source her, if you want her, go get her, because even while there aren't any blooms, watching the new growth is something so, so special, so, so cute. I wouldn't want you to miss it. I appreciate the request. Thank you so very much. And if anybody else is encouraged by requesting to see an orchid or requesting a video on something specific, please follow Amina's example. Make the channel work for you. Leave that request in your comments. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, as always, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.